which for me is a question I, I mean, I hope this doesn't sound self, not self-indulgent, but indulgent conversations about freedom of speech, you know, hearing uh, or reading articles about journalists who've got, you know, uh, national radio shows or, or columns in national newspapers complaining about their freedom of speech. I love that. I mean, in, in normal circumstances, it's hilarious. They're compromising my freedom of speech. Read all about it on page 379, 14, 15 and 20. Oh, and by the way, I'll be on Question Time tonight also complaining about all the attacks on my freedom of speech. I mean, it is objectively hilarious, but only from the outside. If you're inside complaining about attacks upon your freedom of speech in your national newspaper column, then uh, presumably you can't see how funny it is. To the rest of us, and, and, you know, there are followers, there are camp followers, by which I mean followers of the camp, not, not sort of Larry Grayson tribute acts. There are camp followers who also uh, complain about their freedom of speech being attacked um, on, on social media, often with hundreds of thousands of followers. And it, it's, it's a horrible story today. Not the Desmond Swain story. I, 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 again, as, as, as I suggested to you yesterday, I don't think that's a phone-in topic. I think he's behaved abominably, but um, giving oxygen to the people who share views regarding the NHS lying about figures or, 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 or fixing the statistics, which is the phrase that he used, uh, claiming that it's difficult to reconcile um, uh, ICU figures with uh, claims that there's a deadly, deathly pandemic out there. I think we have to report these stories, but I, you understand why I can't let you on the radio to say stuff that could kill someone, don't you? I, 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 am I denying your freedom of speech by doing that? That's the question that we're going to start with today, because there is an absolutely awful story. You, you, you've probably seen it, involving a gentleman called Gary Matthews. I think the only time I felt my temper fraying this week was when we, we took a call from, I think it was Hampstead, from, from a fellow who was punting that libertarian Tufton Street um, uh, think tank line about, if things go wrong, it's personal responsibility, personal. And you sort of found yourself thinking, well, look, if you've got really prominent people claiming that the moon is made of cheese and getting paid a ton of money to claim that the moon is made of cheese, surely they've got more responsibility for, for, for ordinary people who are too busy getting on with their lives to, to do the research or the, or the digging that they need to do. If they end up believing that the moon is made of cheese, surely the, the, the blame lies with the people that told them, doesn't it? It's a defence mechanism here. I talked about it with, with Rachel Clark, the doctor, who's the guest on this week's Full Disclosure. It's a, there's a defence mechanism there when it comes to... Sometimes you believe things that are pretty mean and callous from the outside because they make you feel safer on the inside. So if if you get attacked, and I think this is why women sometimes join in with the old high court judge lines about short skirts and, and sex, sexual assaults. So women can reassure themselves that it won't happen to them because they wouldn't go out dressed like that. It's nonsense, disgusting and wrong, but it's got a, it's got a veneer of logic to it. So this, this dreadful story, uh, involving a chap called Gary Matthews, who is very, very sadly no longer with us, has, has really got under my skin because he appears from newspaper reports and some, I, I haven't confirmed, but, but tweets that are allegedly from his social media accounts. He didn't wear a mask or adhere to any safety measures for weeks, well, throughout. He continued to meet with friends after falling four you see, the Evening Standard says wild COVID conspiracy theories online, but I don't think that's fair. I think some of these wild COVID conspiracy theories are, are, are emerging from what we refer to as mainstream media. He was a painter, a very talented painter, and by all accounts, a lovely bloke. His cousin talks about him very warmly and, uh, and, and obviously very, very sadly. His Twitter profile does show that he was regularly sharing anti-lockdown messages. He was calling for professor. He was calling Chris Whitty Doctor Death for suggesting tougher rules over Christmas. You remember yesterday we touched upon a story of four members of the same family who spent Christmas together had died. And and his his retweets include very prominent public figures, including one who used to work here, uh, two actually I think who used to work here who who have done things like cut up face masks on, on, on live streams. There's someone called Dave. Good grief. Do you remember I said to you that I'd read a tweet that said, show your face, meet your friends, hug other people, go where you want, 
um, disobey tyrants, hashtag fight back better. I said this on air, and I, I didn't tell you who'd posted it. I said, it's such desperate attention seeking. It was a member of the London Assembly. And I read you the tweet, and I thought, I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of saying his name on the radio. Well, I think I have to today. He is a Brexit Alliance London Assembly member. His name is David Curtin. And one of the posts that Gary liked in the weeks before his death stated, show your face, meet your friends, hug other people, go where you want, disobey tyrants, hashtag fight back better. And now he's dead. This is a question I don't know the answer to. I have an opinion, but I don't have any factual or definitive response to this. Is this, is Gary's death the price we all pay for the freedom of speech of public figures who he appeared to have been persuaded by? Is that it? And you can't shut down these people. You can laugh at them when they write their columns about, their national newspaper columns about how their freedom of speech has been compromised, but you can't ban them. I don't think you can. And I suppose that personal responsibility argument becomes a way of avoiding responsibility or absolving people who, for my money, and I'll say this out loud, and, and if you persuade me I shouldn't have done, I'll withdraw it later this hour, but this man was radicalised by household name journalists and politicians, and that radicalization has contributed to killing him. Is that the price we pay for so-called freedom of speech? Okay, so the, the, the introduction proper would be this. I, 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 I'm disgusted by some of the stuff that has been published and broadcast by major news or major media outlets, major media platforms. I don't like um, journalists attacking journalists. I think that's both unhelpful in many ways and uh, self-indulgent. I think it's, it's, like a, it's like a domestic and, and the, even the people next door don't care. They might get irritated by the noise. It's also, of course, a, 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 an appalling catalyst for, for tribalism. I'm closer today, however, than I've ever been from just making uh, a, a, a kind of collection of, of names that appear in this, in this particular story. Um, I've mentioned David Kern because he's an elected politician, but I don't know. I decide you don't need to hear about my personal internal wrestlings, but the, the, the fact is this, a, a man who is a COVID denier, his family say they begged him to wear a face mask before he died alone in his flat from the virus. He had been ill for a week. He tested positive the day before he died. According to his family, he did not wear a mask or adhere to safety measures. And according to his own family, he continued to meet with friends after falling for wild COVID conspiracy theories. Um, again, the report here says online, but then it goes on to name people who, well, I suppose, yeah, who, who know, who do their the bulk of their work offline, as it were, on, on mainstream media, but of course it all gets broadcast and amplified on social media. And, and you know, that means there's a, a, a well, I would say quite a strong possibility that he was walking around being highly infectious and continuing to meet up with like-minded friends and also to potentially infect people that he'd never met before, to, to breathe on people that he'd, he'd never met before. Now, the, the masks are a good example because, as I've said to you a million times, just do the better safe than sorry. The masks were always described to us as something that were more about protecting others than they were about protecting yourself. And he didn't wear one because he'd been persuaded that it was unnecessary or dodgy. And now he's dead. But even more importantly, perhaps, because I can see the case for arguing that he's a victim of his own ignorance. I don't agree with that, but I can see the case. How many people may he have infected by being so willfully irresponsible? And how come the people that persuaded him to be so willfully irresponsible get to waltz away over the sunset absolutely unchecked and unchallenged? I am... Um, I really like this question. I, I, I think it's a very important question. Is this how it has to be? Because I think, at first glance, I think it is probably how things have to be. I don't see how, I mean, I don't see how else you can do it. You have to let these people do their 
crazy things in public, even if it means that poor souls like Gary die. I'd love to be wrong. At the moment, I can't see that I am. 20, <laughs> nothing new there. 26 minutes after 10 is the time. 0345 607973. I'm not going to name the names uh, because, well, I've explained why. It's not, it's not a hill I'm going to die on, but it's just my personal view, my personal attitude to things. He believed, all the people whose names you already know, that rail against masks. One of the tweets he put used the words muzzle. Remember when you told me people were calling them face nappies and I didn't believe you, and then I went and checked. I just Googled the phrase face nappies. Couldn't believe some of the names that came up. And I think I can't see a system under which they can be prevented from doing what they've done. And I can't see an account of Gary's death that doesn't apportion at least some of the responsibility to them. Luke's in Stoke-on-Trent. Luke, what do you think? I, uh, James, um, basically that if we're going to start accepting this as the baseline of how we move forward, then we've got to reevaluate how we treat terrorists and hate preachers. Um, quite simply, because hey, if you want to... I think we've got... I, I'll, I'll let you make your point, but just yeah. as, as an early so, caution, I think I've got enough on my plate without bringing terrorists and hate preachers yeah, into I know. it. Uh, but like you say, what I'm saying is, is, is that if you want to take it uh, that, that, that uh, this guy's been radicalised to have those views and opinions, then um, you have to then look at people like the 9-11 bombers. No, I don't... Have a, no, I don't that's think like, you do, do you? Cause, oh, you mean as in they, they believed the preachers and therefore... Yeah. No, because cause Gary didn't deliberately go out and try to kill anybody. If he no, has been responsible... Same... No, it's not the same. It's completely different. Because if I say to you, Luke, go out and kill someone, mm. that's very different from saying to you, Luke, don't wear one of these masks, and then you, in good faith, not wearing one, and, and much against your own desires and your own understanding of the issue, accidentally infecting someone. I mean, I'd say where I'm coming from is that this, 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 a lot of this brainwashing is going on in, in the public sphere, and whether or not it's, uh, like you say, tacit or... Oh, uh, OK. No, you're it, making a better point yeah. than I gave you credit for. I apologise. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing is, is, is that we're at the thin end of a wedge now of people being told what they should and shouldn't do, then, then taking action and causing... Uh, OK, so, so the word we people. need, the word we need for, for me to have understood your point a little quicker would be radicalization this this yes gary was gary matthews was radicalized and you know the question that people always ask when it is as you suggest um uh, uh, islamist fundamentalists or even extremists who, who aren't white supremacists the question that is always asked is who radicalized him so if we say yeah. who radicalized gary matthews we kind of know don't we yeah and, and if we were to say, if we were to say that they, well, okay, so they don't get punished. The people who radicalised Gary Matthews don't get punished, but the people who radicalised terrorists do do get punished. Held accountable. That's well, they what, are though. Well, I mean, like you say, are, are the people who were saying that wearing a mask of a face nap is really being called out in the public square and said, "Look, you're not only just harming people's lives; you're causing people to get." completely um insane in doing things that so, you so freedom of speech others. freedom from so, so so no one told him to go out and I also you know if i was a lawyer i'd point out my client has uh, maybe apart from the fellow who actually cut one up on 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 facebook but my client has merely expressed skepticism about some of the published signs at no point did he encourage people like gary matthews to go out and endanger themselves and others I, I, I yeah so it's mate sorry i didn't bite your head off thankfully for, but but i did um I, I don't know you said the words terrorists and i had a bit of a a knee-jerk reaction and, and given how much time i spend castigating others for having a knee-jerk reaction i shall take my medicine on that but is this is this the price we pay luke's added even further nuance to the story this man is dead because he believed people who are very prominent in the public space casting doubt on things like face masks and on uh the covid figures and indeed the the virus in general casting doubt on social distancing on lockdowns is that the price we pay for freedom of speech people like gary will die it's one of the most misunderstood and probably misused phrases of the age, isn't it, free speech? It probably always has been. The great Rosetta Stone to unlock its complexities is, is famously the person shouting fire in a crowded cinema when there isn't one. Is he exercising freedom of speech or is he actually 
culpable for, for death when the stampeding cinema goers head for a small fire exit and end up trampling over each other to get there. Uh, and, you know, that, that's not a rhetorical question. Of course he's guilty. And that is not freedom of speech. So whether it is suggesting that lockdowns don't work, which you still hear coming from the most unlikely and surprising of places, highest death toll in the world, but lockdowns don't work. Right. Figures coming down as a result of every lockdown we've had. Figures going back up again as a result of coming out of them too early. But yeah, they don't work. I mean, that's incredible. But it's by far, it's, it, it's nowhere near the worst example of, of so-called COVID denial or scepticism. Don't wear a mask. Huh? And uh, ignore the social distancing rules. Carry on meeting your friends. And then this character who, I won't lie to you, who I wish I'd never heard of, but who sits, in, in, I mean, imagine if you voted for him. He sits in the London Assembly as a member of something called the Brexit Alliance, and he has tweeted, and I read you the tweet, and I said at the time, I'm not going to give him any more attention. And, and on days like today, I wonder whether, what if Gary Matthews had been listening that day, and I had taken a few minutes to pull this David Curtin character to pieces, and maybe Gary Matthews would be alive today. But one of the last things this chap did before, in the weeks before his death was to like a post from this politician that says, show your face, meet your friends, hug other people, go where you want, disobey tyrants. So he did. And you can argue that he's dead as a result of his own ignorance, but if he was doing that while infected, how many other people? So where does freedom of speech end in this context? There's no definitive answer, but as ever on this programme, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Macaulay is in Manchester. Macaulay, what would you like to say? Hiya, James. Big Hello. fan of the show, just like to say. You're Big fan kind. of you. You're very kind, Macaulay. A man of <laughs> impeccable taste. You, you, you carry on like this and I'll be reading out what the Times Literary Supplement have just said about you. But for the moment, <laughs> modesty prevails, Macaulay. Go on, what, what point did you want to make? So, I've got a friend on Facebook and um, I could slowly see that descent into the rabbit hole. Really? At first it was, all oh, this COVID stuff, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Out of nowhere and post that of sort of uh, followed that trend at first. Then they started getting a bit more extreme, saying that it's all a big part of the New World Order, that it's a big plan. And she starts sharing pictures and videos of family meals, no face masks, no social distancing, no nothing. Yeah. Anyway, we'd had a lot of arguments on Facebook, and mm. I was saying you're being very irresponsible here. And what would she say uh, in return? Oh, all sorts, all sorts. Of you're part of the problem? You, you, you're... you're... I mean, you fall, exactly. you're a sheeple, was, you've fallen for it. I was it. a sheeple, wake up. I needed to wake up. Yeah. yeah. But then she, went, then she went quiet for a couple of weeks, and I thought, she must have unfriended me, because we'd had these, uh, we'd had these arguments. Yeah. Anyway, I checked, we were still friends, she, she had just gone quiet. A couple of days later, very, very, very sadly, posted a, an update that her dad had died from COVID. Oh, my Lord. And... Has, has there been any self-examination? Like I, I can tell you're not someone that would derive any sort of schadenfreude from that by, by any stretch of the imagination. But and I was uh, absolutely devastated of for course. her. But, you know, she's got, she's got a family, husband, kids, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I just think how terrifying it must be to actually buy into that conspiracy. Like, be believe the earth is flat if you want. That, that yeah. doesn't hurt anyone. Believe certain conspiracies that don't do any harm. The, this conspiracy does cause real-world, tangible harm to people. Yeah, and, and yet, how would we police it? I mean, not least because, for want of a better phrase, it's a moving target, isn't it? It's, it's you know, the science is relatively new. The World Health Organization was unpersuaded of the wisdom of masks at the very, very outset. We didn't understand it well enough to make definitive statements. So the most successful conspiracy theories are the ones that contain the tiniest nugget of truth. And yeah. from that tiny nugget, all manner of madness and nonsense can, can spread. Do you, do you know if your friend has had a sort of moment of self-examination or or, or, or or presumably she she might be too bamboozled by grief but does she I've does she recognize recently, you haven't okay i was going to say does I've she recognize that you were recently. right and goodness but knows she, what you'd say when you do she hasn't been sharing uh anti-social no. distancing or anti anti mask stuff since i've not i've not spoken to her no. in person but i know the manager of a of a, of a chain store, um, hardware 
chain store. Yeah. And she was saying on the phone that um, that she just gets abuse day in, day out. You know, you know, you'll have seven people in the store and you'll say, you know, it's six, six tops yes. and then someone kicks off and you've got to wear your mask and someone else kicks off. I wonder whether um, we've underreported this kind of thing for, for, for whatever reason, not we specifically, um, but but that, that mindset is a weird one. The cousin of, of Gary Matthews, tri a chap called Tristan, Tristan Copeland, said he'd begged him to wear a mask and to maintain social distance. And this bit is in quotes, and it chimes completely with what you've just said. He and his friends had the mindset that they needed to go out and meet people to show they didn't believe the government. It's madness. I mean, it's hard. Like, I haven't seen my mum in over a year. I haven't seen my grandmother in over a year. Gosh. But... I'd be devastated. I, I couldn't live with myself if I, if I broke social distancing guidelines. I went round to the house and I gave them COVID. I couldn't live with myself. No, but that's because you believe that you might. You know, well, actually, you know that you might. I think is a fair comment. Whereas they believe that they won't. Which, in, I, 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 we need a lawyer on the line. I'm sure there are a couple listening who would would, would wade into this. Uh, on 03456060973. But if I honestly didn't believe I was putting you at risk by coming round to yours for tea, even though I was, then I wonder whether the finger of culpability moves from the agent of infection to the person who persuaded the agent of infection that they weren't infectious. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, Macaulay, what a terrible tale, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm grateful to you for sharing it, because it highlights that all of this, it's a public conversation, but it, it speaks immediately to the personal, and, and I think it was probably a little bit over the top of me to wonder whether if, if I'd had a crack at this so-called Brexit Alliance politician on air, instead of just reading out the tweet and then dismissing it, wondering whether if people had been listening to that who'd fallen for this, it may have helped just drag one back from, from the precipice. And, and it's that line there, I think. Every time I read this article from last night's Standard, I find myself focusing on a different line. But it's that one there. He and his friends had the mindset that they needed to go out and meet people to show they didn't believe the government. Many public figures, names that are currently uh, jostling for prominence in your own mind, have created that belief. Is that the price of free speech? The fact that next time this happens, God forbid, in our lifetimes, they'll still be there, insisting that they know better, finding perhaps one vaguely qualified scientist to challenge the consensus of, of every supremely qualified scientist in the relevant field and then sticking him on their radio show every 10 minutes. Is that how... It, I mean, is that just the price we pay? I can't... I don't know what motivates these people, but I, 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 I don't know what might stop them either. Jan is in uh, Traben in Germany. Jan, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Thank yeah. you very much for taking my call. I'm a bit welcome. nervous, I must say. Oh, it's <laughs> only me. Don't be. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I'm not a lawyer, but I do think I have a pretty good idea what's behind all of these uh, conspiracy theories. Um, you know, all of those lies being spouted yes. by figureheads in the newspapers by that's owned by billionaires yes that's that's all uh, tragic but i think there's a much much greater pro problem and i think it's actually worldwide and that is the echo chambers of social media uh, yes i mean they're not mutually exclusive conclusions but while you're here do you have yes. household name actors journalists politicians in germany who are publicly and lucratively in terms of either money or attention telling people not to wear masks being skeptical uh poo-pooing lockdown i mean is it is it is it an industry in germany like it is here because i just don't know i i don't i don't believe believe so i've, no. I've never seen any uh, pop, public figure or politician uh spouting about that and also uh, really? the country where i'm from yeah. um uh, the netherlands also there's well, the handling of it was pretty bad. And, and, uh, and there's the massive beginning. protests and the, and the line between a yeah. valid protest oh, yeah. against government incompetence and a, and a protest in favour of conspiracies and lies is very thin. It's yeah. vanishingly thin because two people from both camps can turn up at the same protest. And how can you then conclude what the protest is about? But that strengthens your point because I'm, I'm sitting here thinking that the radicalizers, the preachers of, of anti-mask, anti-lockdown scepticism are accountable and you're sort of saying look even if they weren't there this problem would probably be just as big because of the social media echo chambers 
Exactly. Exactly my point. Oh, well, we'll never and, know. And there are people that are saying, for instance, your namesake on Wednesday, a James, he said uh, there's this question of personal uh, uh, responsibility, yes. right? Yes. Well, um, I have a pretty good uh, retort, I think. Go on. Um, well, what if uh, you are not um, easily influenced? Yeah. Right. That's that's just not possible because all these big companies are spending billions and billions and billions in advertising. Yes. If advertising does not work, why are they spending billions? Well, this is this is your yeah. absolute. This is kryptonite to the Tufton Street personal responsibility view. I mean, it's all free choice. It's all personal responsibility. Um, which would be true if they spent as much money on encouraging people not to eat junk food and, and, and guzzle sugary drinks as they do on encouraging people to do it. So, you, yeah, I think you might enjoy my first book, Jan. I don't, I don't know that it's been translated into any of the um, uh, native languages you have, but your English is well good enough to uh, to enjoy it. 10.46 is the time. 03456060973 is the number. It's funny, isn't it? I, I don't know that there is a way through this, Woods. I don't, I mean, you can't. What would happen? I mean, some people were cross when Donald Trump was taken off Twitter after encouraging his followers to, to launch an attack upon the Capitol. Successfully encouraging them to launch an attack upon the Capitol. Lying through his teeth, the most powerful man on the planet, lying several times a day about the results of a democratic election. And, and some people felt that his freedoms were somehow being compromised when Twitter belatedly, far too belatedly, took him off their platform. So are we in a world where freedom to, freedom of speech means freedom to be fatally wrong? And if you don't like it, then someone will bowl up to, to explain why it's all your own fault you're dead. It's, 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 you've got a hundred people queuing up to say, drink this poison, drink this poison, drink this poison, drink this poison, drink this poison. You've got your algorithm set up and your media choices made in such a way you don't hear any of the voices saying, I'm a poison expert. Please don't drink this. I'm a poison. All you hear is drink this poison, drink this poison, drink this poison, drink this poison. You turn on your radio, drink this poison. Open your newspaper, drink this poison. Go on Facebook, drink this poison. Go on Twitter, drink this poison. And then you drink the poison and some vampire with a newspaper column will come along and explain why it's all your own fault and you should have used your personal responsibility. Reasons why I might be wrong when I, I, I prefer to focus on... Um, politicians or elected politicians rather than journalists and I, and I steer a little bit clear of blaming social media completely for lies and conspiracy theories that have taken hold in, in, in the country on a scale that I think many people just don't realise. It, it's probably one of those subjects about which you know next to nothing or everything. If you know someone or if you are someone who's gone down these rabbit holes, you're an expert. The rest of us are, are, are complete ingenues. We, we know almost nothing. But the But the thing that makes me wonder whether I'm wrong is, is actually an American politician called Marjorie Taylor Greene, who until relatively recently would have been one of the online loonies, um, alleging that school shooting tragedies in, in Newton and in Parkland were staged, claiming that Hillary Clinton had murdered a child during a satanic ritual and drunk her blood. I think that there, there was a line about a Jewish laser being used to... I'll double check that. I wouldn't want to misrepresent her in any way, shape or form. But I mean, she is also she was filmed following a very impressive young man called David Hogg, who was at the school in Parkland where 20 of his classmates were, were, were murdered and who then had to endure uh, a hate campaign. Uh, one of the fathers, or at least one of the fathers involved in that has had to go into hiding, appears on television in disguise because he gets attacked by followers of, of one of Donald Trump's most prominent supporters who, who was arguing before and after Donald Trump became president that the Parkland school shootings were a hoax. And, and this woman, Marjorie Taylor Greene, is now um, a congresswoman for, for, for the state of Georgia. So, I mean, that suggests that focusing on elected politicians instead of the people punting it in the public space is dangerous because the people punting it in the public space tomorrow could be elected politicians people punting it in the public space yesterday could be elected politicians tomorrow. 10.54 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC, where we find ourselves um, just wondering where the line is between freedom of speech and radicalising uh, so-called COVID deniers who are now dead. Richard is in Toaster. Richard, what made you pick up the phone? 
Um, hi, James. Hello. Great admirer, first time caller. Thank you. I don't, um, you don't, people don't have to say that. I'm always, always very <laughs> flattering when they do, but I wouldn't want anyone to think it was a requirement of entry. Carry on, Richard. Yeah, we run three groups on Facebook, um, a conspiracy groups, where we actually get the conspiracy theorists in and then try to educate them with facts. Go on. So, how do you, do, do you mind if I, I don't want you to give away trade secrets, but how do you lure, lure them in? Um, we lured them in under the guise of a conspiracy theorist. Oh, wow. So the likes of David Icke, Gareth Icke, right. um, Brian Rose. But yes. picking up on your point about politicians, I find it ironic that someone like Brian Rose is allowed to run for Mayor I don't of know, London. I don't know who he is. Um, well, he's running, well, he's running for Mayor of London. Okay. And yet he's given a platform to all the conspiracy theorists in America and this country during the pandemic. Well, so have media outlets that we have all heard of. So I, I, I'm not. Oh. I, the only reason I'm reluctant is because you you know more about this than I do, and I'm not. Yeah. I don't have the facts at my fingertips in order to say, whoa, 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 we're just veering a well, bit close to that line, or we're veering a bit close to that line. So if we could, and and I'm staying with this yeah. until twelve, so there'll be plenty of opportunity to to expand. But I want. I'm more interested in what you do to well, help these do, people we, and and how you feel about. Uh, you mentioned names, and that's fine. They're, 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 yeah. I mean, if he wants to get elected, he's a politician. He's thrown his hat into the public ring. But how 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 could we possibly make a case for their complicity in the deaths of people like Gary Matthews? Not not the people you've named, but the people doing similar things. Um, you've got to look at social media as a whole, Is it? and look at all media outlets to do with Facebook. What they've been allowed to be shown. Um, they do have the fact check um, fact check system in place. But um, even the fact check systems, you know, they're partially false, um, partially rated false. We then take people out of the groups into um, direct messaging. Oh, really? And then we show them proper information. To give you an example, I've been sent a video of Bill, Bill Gates, um, for example, speaking at a video conference with, which had been cleverly audited yeah. to make it sound genuine. And then I had to find the real piece to send back to the, the person I was dealing with. Did, does it, what's your hit rate, would you say? Um, we have a hit rate of about 3%. So for every 100 people you contact, three, you manage to bring back to the light? We man yeah, and the rabbit hole is very deep, James. I know, I know. Even if we can get them up to the rim, it's a success, you know. But, well, why um, do you do it? Um, I'm a fourth-year psychology student. Yeah. I'm currently a builder. I'm coming away from that trade. And um, I'm, I'm compassionate about my fellow humans. Very compassionate. And you are, and I, I'm not to put too fine a point on it, and, and the case again, an ad, you could be saving lives. You could be saving yeah, lives. Yeah, we have an admin team as well that are all very compassionate. They all work. Really? You know, some are, some are nurses, some are doctors. You know, I, I think that's the definition of heroism to have a three percent hit rate on such profoundly important work because most of us would probably give up and go home at that point, and yet here you it, are fighting the good fight. It is challenging, James, but someone has to do the work, you know. Um, we can all be critical of society. Um, the buck has to land somewhere. I do think that the government should do more to do with the misinformation. <clears throat> well, how can it if you've got people like Desmond Swain? Um, in, in, not should, in the uh, government, you know, technically, but him, in the should, party of government and in parliament. They should pull him in line, James. You know, that's what they should do. You know, and I think the biggest problem now that we're going to face is vaccine misinformation. Well, the MP, this is Desmond Swain, gave an interview two weeks ago to Del Bigtree, is that a name you know? Yeah. A producer for Andrew Wakefield's anti-vaccine propaganda operation. So Desmond claimed that Britain had become a, quote, police state, end quotes, and accused the government of attempting to implement, quote, social control, end quotes, and this particular anti-vaxxer called the MP a hero. So legally, I don't think you can touch him. Um, legally, you can't, but the government needs to... If, if you look at society and think that, just say, 1% of society is down the rabbit hole right now. Yeah. You know, more than that, then I he, think, falls, but... he falls into that 1%, James. And and I, I think you, you... I think you're the guiding light for the rest of us then this hour, because of the work you do and the knowledge that you have, is that you have to accept this is the price we pay for freedom of speech, and you, you, you fight it by exercising your own freedom of speech. Mm, it's a full-time job after a full-time job, James. 
How can people find out more about what you do? And, and bearing in mind that this is the first time I've heard of it, and, and I have absolutely no reason not to take you completely in good faith, but, but obviously I can't, I can't endorse anything that I don't all know I can, about. All I can say, James, is there's going yeah. to be a television programme coming up soon, okay. which is basically going to give our groups um, a lot of limelight. Oh, I look forward to that. Tell the producer more about it so that I can make sure that, that I direct traffic in, in your direction. But, but, but finally, Richard... Um, if someone listening to this were were desperate to to benefit from your help, what 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 could they do? Um, the first point is to speak to family and friends. You know, it, it's sort of like you've got to remember everyone that's down the rabbit hole feels like they're um, secret to some sort of um, knowledge. That that's that's else. the appeal, isn't it? That's the intoxicant. Is the idea that uh, we're we're in the know and you're not? And and I guess the more alienated. Uh, and disenfranchised you feel whether rightly or wrongly doesn't matter if that is how you feel then the idea you know taps knows the idea that you're in on something and everybody else isn't i can see just how seductive that might be richard thank you for, for what you do i'd love to find out more I, I, I respect your discretion on air um but i'd love to find out more off air so so do provide ava with the deets um he's right though isn't he what else can you do you've got this fella touring studios yesterday refusing to apologize you've got Newspaper columnists and, and, and household name national broadcasters being cited by a bloke who's now dead as inspiration for his own COVID denial. And then some of them are even whining about having their freedom of speech compromised in, in newspapers read by millions of people. It'd be funny if it wasn't actually killing people. I, I, I mean, it's a fairly bleak conclusion to arrive at, just as is Richard's hit rate of about three percent when he dedicates enormous amounts of time with his fellow um crusaders uh, online trying to de-radicalize people and and that is the right word isn't it you know gary matthews is dead because he believed that coronavirus was either a hoax or being exaggerated that masks were useless and that people should ignore social distancing rules you can't state with 100 percent certainty that that's why he's dead but you can state with a Fed, well, you can state with 100% certainty that if he was following that world view in the weeks prior to his death, for, I mean, a rough estimate, three or four of which he would have been infected, then he would have been infectious and he would have been endangering anybody he came into contact with, whether they were people who, like him, believed these mad lies that are being punted from almost every corner of the universe or, or not and and that's why it is it's just sad and the, the only element of politics perhaps is the the personal responsibility argument the toxic claim that's been injected into our bloodstream by decades of secretly funded think tanks and and, and billionaire owned newspapers doing the business of billionaires while pretending to care about you and me that that, that is it you know if something goes wrong it's all your fault we don't need tax money being spent on uh, education uh, or, or, or healthcare or, or anti-obesity measures or giving people money to lose weight it's disgusting and then within a blink of an eye well the only reason these people are dead is because they were overweight so it's nothing to do with the government but what how can you make both of those arguments <laughs> it's almost as blatantly hypocritical as having a huge problem with the police stopping people who might be in breach of coronavirus regu who are in breach of coronavirus regulations but being supremely enthusiastic about the police stopping usually young men of color who may or may not be guilty of an unspecified and even unsuspected crime so you sir empty your pockets you, you might have drugs in them excuse me i'm white and i went to public school oh as you were carry on terribly sorry um you sir stop there in the street you're breaking coronavirus regular you jobs worth copper you'll be arrested me for having a picnic next um and oh hang on boss there is a kid over there who's black oh splendid we'll go and stop and search him and the tabloid newspapers will be cheering us to the rafters I, I, can you have double standards when you don't have any it's a question for the ages and can you have freedom of speech when it kills people nothing will change nothing will happen the people who were cited by gary matthews will still be cashing their checks at the end of this month, and I don't know that there's any way to avoid it. And, and that, I, I get a bit over the top sometimes, but that genuinely breaks my heart. 03456060973 is the number you need. Um, just, just so you know, I, I, at the moment, I cannot resist the urge to follow Nick Ferrari down a, uh, a, a slightly um, shallow swimming lane, although 
I think you understand why. I don't know if you heard him talking about the case of the decapitated snowman on his program this morning, but there was a real reminder of the, the, the fun that we can have together when we're not caught up in a, in a global pandemic or in the continuing paroxysms of Brexit and, and other issues, or indeed the, the casualties of footballification of, of politics. So I'm going to ask you, if you didn't hear the story, can you work out how this... Do you want to build a snowman? ...could possibly lead to this? Everybody was fighting. <laughs> if not, stay tuned. If so, you're already in for a treat. Jackie's in Watford to steer us back to the deep end. Jackie, what would you like to say? Oh, James, I've had, I've had a couple of weeks of absolute... It's The virus has just hit me like a truck. Oh. Um, my very, very best friend um, lives with her elderly parents at the moment, and I won't go into the circumstances okay. of why she's no, ended up there. Sure. But um, we, we never really took it seriously. Everybody we knew that had it had it so mild because yeah. they were younger... Um, she went to a party uh, um, at Christmas, um, which obviously you're not supposed to do, and everybody at that party has since tested positive. So she went for a test. Um, all she had was a hacking cough, but no, no other symptoms, just a bit of a cough. But she went for a test and it came up positive. So um, she obviously told her parents and they went for a test and they were both positive. Her dad has, seems to have got away with it, really. But her mum, two days later, she was admitted to hospital and she died last week. Oh, Jackie. And my friend is just absolutely beside herself. It's just... Does, does it's she... Just what's, the, awful. what's the word I want? Does she blame herself? Well, she sort of knows that... Yeah. She, she, I mean, there is no doubt, because her parents were shielding... There is no doubt that... So she, she, that, she went to a... Essentially, she went to an infection party and then brought the virus home, and now her mum is dead. Yeah, and and the, when you die, uh, which I've learned, as I said, it's hit me like a truck, so now I know all the details of it. Yeah. But when you die of COVID... Be careful. Um, Remember, there's the people listening. It might be kids listening and stuff. People, yeah, but when you die of COVID, you can't see the person. Right, yeah. Um, that's what I was going to say. No, and so... No. Her, her dad, who's been married to her mum for 60 years, the last time he saw his wife was getting into an ambulance at three o'clock in the morning, and the next thing he got two days later was a call at seven in the morning to say she died. Um, and so, what, so, obviously, he wanted to go up there to sort of see her. Um, they weren't allowed to. They were only allowed to go up and pick up her jewellery. Um also, um, he thought he'd see her in the... And also, he was still in his isolation period because he's positive as well. Well, when he came out of that, he thought he'd go and see her in the morgue. You're not allowed to. Really? Then he thought he'd see her at the Chapel of Rest. He's not allowed to because it's COVID. Um, even the coffin you choose has to be a certain thickness. It can't be the wicker one that we, we wanted for her. Um and so he's he's not been able to say goodbye, and obviously he's in the right state, and my friend is trying to look after him, but she has this horrendous, obviously, this guilt, and I don't know if she's ever going to get over it. Um, you, you, do you know what? I don't know what to say. Obviously, I don't know what to say. This is the, the example of the conversation that we've been having since 10 o'clock that, that really knocks all criticism or, or naysayers if there are any out there into 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 space doesn't it but can i say to you you're a brilliant friend to her because i can hear the love in your voice and the concern for your friend whereas an awful lot of people listening would want to give her a, a metaphorical slap jackie well i mean me and her are really really dear friends She's bloody um, lucky to have you in her life still well, she was there from lots of things that happened to me in, in my life, which, if, you know, if, if you know enough. who I am, you know about it because sure. we've spoken before about what yeah. happened to me. No, um, but, um, so, I, I, yeah, but it's just... Um, Where did I mean, she get the idea from that... Because you said we didn't take it that seriously, and I get—I understand that because you've ha you, you, you had it and it wasn't that bad, and and you know you don't do this for a living like I do, but you've got 
103,000 people dead now. And and the, the, was she just blasé and a bit silly? Or was, she think, be, or was she believing the people who were telling her that there was nothing to worry about? I think that um, when it first started, it seemed to be up north more. Um, and then that the sort of London variant or Kent variant, as they're calling it, went mad. And then everybody we know, everybody got it. But... Um, because, because, you know, a lot of young people just not taking it seriously at all and going out and everything. Yeah. They all got it, but they all had it mild. So it's a case if it wasn't going to happen, you don't think it's going to happen to you. And um, and even when but even when she tested positive, she wanted to um, go and stay somewhere else, but, like, come and stay with me. Yeah. But it was too late by then. Of course it was. It was. She'd already because, brought it home. She'd already brought well, because it. because by the time she got tested positive, she'd already heard about the other people at this same party oh, that had how many were at the How many were at the party? Uh, well, lots. Right, about um, a full-on shindig, a full-on Christmas knees up. Yeah, and... and Why didn't um, you go? <sighs> um, I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I, I don't... I'm not, I just didn't. I'm not... No, uh, I, I just, just wanted, don't. And did you... I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm a teacher, you. and yeah. um, I was uh, you know, um, my my students were dropping left, right, and centre with it. But again, having it really mild, and I'm a bit terrified of it myself, actually. Yeah. Um, because I think that out of the odds of all the people I knew that have got it, there's got to be one of us who cops it bad, and that might be me. So I, I just wasn't put, there. Perfectly put. If if I made you empress of all you survey, if I put you in charge. What would you do to... If, imagine if I was sitting here now on the radio and, and I don't know, cutting, mm. up, cutting up a mask or saying lockdowns don't work or talking about how it's a hoax or it's a, it's a coronavirus. How would you punish me? I think, I think those people need to... Um, I know it can't, be ha it can't happen, but they need to visit a, a COVID ward because um, yeah. Around just after Christmas, I mean, she only died last week, and around mm. this time now, the, they are putting beds in every corner they can find, and it is, it's, it's absolutely, it's, it's just, it's, it's like a war zone up there. It is like, a, it's like a war zone. Well, it's worse and, than that in a way because it's like a war zone out the, in there, and then outside you've got a, a significant number of people denying that there's any war taking place. Or in the case of Rachel Clark, the doctor who's my guest on Full Disclosure this week, when she describes what's happening in hospitals, some of the particularly pungent proponents of of, of right wing alleged journalism line up to attack her because she's not a fan of the government, so she can't be trusted when she describes what she sees at. Work. So at least when we're at war, everyone agrees we're at war. I think. I tell you, I tell you, we. I mean, they are doing their best. But one of the things they said when she first was admitted to hospital was that she was only seventy-five, so that's not that old. Oh. Um, that um, that she wouldn't. They wouldn't put her in. Um, they wouldn't resuscitate her if she got any worse, and they wasn't going to put her on a ventilator because they didn't think right. it would help her. She was gone too bad. That's the, the old DNR, isn't it? Yeah, but they did say that um, that if that they would let her, if it come to that point, they would call people, but they didn't call until an hour after she'd actually oh. died, and that's because they just. Like we couldn't get any news. Keep ringing the hospital. They were just so so busy. Well, the ratio of, um, of the ratio of staff to patient is yeah. is, is gone well, off the. Well, we went up to get a to get a, to get a jury, yeah. um, and we waited fifteen minutes at the door ringing the bell. Yeah. Um, we weren't just like banging at the door for no, fifteen minutes, getting on their nerves. But you know, we just had to wait for someone to come to the door, um, and we weren't. Uh, including a, her dad has not not even been allowed to see her or anything, but it's um it's it, it's just well they're overrun. You, you don't, well, you do, you just don't, don't get the chance to say to say goodbye. Um, um, and, you know, and you know, humans just, have to make that decision. I, I don't want to betray any confidences, but I, I I've spoken to one this week, someone who has to make not not Rachel um uh, on the full disclosure, but someone I know outside work who has to make the decision on, on who gets the ventilator and who doesn't. And obviously people who would normally get one 
and it sounds to me, Jackie, as if your friend's mum falls into this category, they don't now get one because they're... There are shortages. They're 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 at a premium. They they can't put someone on a ventilator who would have been put on a ventilator two years ago because the virus has used up so many of the vent. And that think of that toll of that job. I, I mean, who would want to do that? But someone has and, to in every hospital. And do you know that people when they when they're in the sort of throes of it, by the time you ring an ambulance, there's this thing that where they get delirious. They they uh, have you heard of that? They get delirium. I mean, I didn't know any of this. I thought it was just... Well, it's a tough... It's a tightrope to walk for, for, for journalists as well because, as I, I even cautioned you, to be careful what you say on the radio a minute ago because I was worried about who might be listening and, and that means that some of the full effects that might help dilute some of the um, scepticism... I would need a better word. Lies? Nonsense? I don't know. Um, you don't bring it to the party because you don't want to scare and spook people. Uh, Jackie, I'm so sorry for for your loss as well as your friends because clearly this is isn't, isn't isn't you have no immunity from from heartbreak. And I'll say again, y y I know she's seen you right over the years, but my goodness me, she's lucky to have you in her life. Ninety minutes after eleven, and and there we have it. You know, the people who create the mindset that causes these deaths, still still doing it, still doing it don't get it the contract signed between astrazeneca and the european commission has just been published ben kentish is pouring over the finer detail a lot of it redacted of course at some of the commercially sensitive stuff so i don't expect to see any prices or numbers in there and other detail but the fundamental question of who well i think they both thought they were right didn't they that's why the world needs lawyers <laughs> But the fact that the European Commission, have, or it's been published as far as I can tell on the European Commission's website, on, on the European, um, they've published it, suggests that they must think that it proves their point, as opposed to the um, interview given to an Italian newspaper by the head of AstraZeneca earlier this week, which, which claimed a, a completely different point. It's just awful. I mean, it's absolutely awful. Even the Brexit relitigation involved in this is awful, although I, 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 I don't think it's worth challenging. I think that, you know, you worry, as someone who recognises how ridiculous Brexit is going to be, you worry about the unleavened diet of proof. So just for the, for the mental health of people who supported it, I think allowing them to um, uh, sort of cling to the idea that this proves that leaving the European Union was a good idea is actually quite a generous thing to do. It's quite a helpful thing to do. Of course, you have to bring some facts to the party. For example, we were abiding by European Union legislation last year when we, and rules when we put all of these contracts in place. There was absolutely no legal obstacle as a member of the European Union to doing what we've done. Having said that, that's a fact. My feeling is that had we not... Um, left technically, although not actually, then I don't know that we would have sailed this ship alone. So it's it's kind of 50-50. We could have done as members, so not being members anymore is not the reason why we were able to do this, but equally I don't know that we would have done. And Germany, as I understand it, has somewhat typically managed to kind of ride both horses by being a leading advocate of the shared programme uh, which is going very badly at the moment, but also securing tens of millions of, of extra doses, which technically they were kind of not supposed to do, although there was no legal obstacle from pre preventing them from doing so. But that that it's just awful. You, you know, unless you're a psychopath, you want as many people on this planet as possible to be vaccinated as quickly as possible. I'm not completely naive. You know, I, I, I'm looking at Keith and Ava right now, and if it was a choice between vaccinating them, who I'm occasionally fond of i would uh, opposed to someone i have never met before of the same age and demographic and health uh, although you should give up smoking uh, i would um I'd, I'd obviously choose them or, or at least I'd, I'd 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 have to be persuaded that they should just join a queue along with lots of people i haven't met who who would i want to get vaccinated first my mum or your mum well my mum actually and and i can understand i'm not completely stupid i understand how that can be if 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 the right demagogues and sort of vaguely racist commentators get their teeth into you i can see how you can be persuaded to um to think that brits it's more important to vaccinate brits than it is to vaccinate germans until someone points out that the brit that they're vaccinating someone who's woke oh so hang on here's a german here's a far right 
is a member of the AFD. Who should get vaccinated first? Your fellow far-right German or your woke Brit? So you see what I mean about how silly this is once you scratch the surface of it. But the beauty of racist rhetoric is that you don't ever scratch the surface of it. You just give people the red meat and then uh, fill your, pick their pockets while they're busy chomping on it. It, it, it always reminds me slightly of Jeremy Corbyn during Brexit. And, uh, and, and I just mean that because the argument that I'd much rather be led by someone British, I'd much rather, don't, yeah, and, and then you sort of think, really? I mean, Angela Merkel, wrongly perceived as, as being in charge of the European Union, is, is, is a quite a right-wing politician. Would you really rather have Jeremy Corbyn in charge of your destiny than Angela Merkel if you hate everything that's even vaguely left-wing or so? Anyway, complicated, complicated, complicated and unnecessary because we're talking about freedom of speech versus freedom to die. And, and the fear I have that freedom of speech actually becomes freedom to kill people who believe you when you exercise your freedom of speech to say things that are either palpably untrue or very, very dangerous. Chris is in La Rochelle in France. Chris, what would you like to say? No? Okay, we'll see what we can do with that. Don't tell me the lines have gone down again. 28 minutes after 11 is the time. Uh, Ben's in Basingstoke. Ben, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello. Uh, I haven't spoken to you for a while. Um, I've, uh, I've been working as a doctor during the first wave and again now, and also working on some of the research into... Uh, the trials for COVID. Um, and I think that it's such a sad story of, of the, the, the poor the poor mum who got it off a daughter who'd gone to a party. And you heard that. Awful, it's it? it was terrible. Just awful. I mean... Are you, are you ben, that... ben who came into the studio? Are you just Ben? Yes, that's... You're uh, so ben yeah, White. Yeah. You're Ben White. Yeah, Ben... Okay, yeah. it's good to hear your voice again, Ben. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Thank you for everything that you're doing. Yeah, working back on the wards again now. Yes. And... Uh, it's just, it's really sad, and it's what we're seeing every day, James, and I think it's the the staff on the wards, we we generally just keep keeping our heads down and, and working, you know? That's, yeah. that's in the main... But, but to see some of this disinformation, um, misinformation, is it's, it's not only disheartening, but I think it's worse than that, because it's... There's no accountability for these people. No. And if you think about um, Andrew Wakefield, who yes. caused palpable harm from from his, you know, from his anti-vax stance, and now continues to cause even worse harm in America, but but this is the sort of thing that these people, the prominent lockdown skeptics, uh, whatever you want to call them, because they shift their names no. as their arguments shift. So you never you never really know. It's this sort of amorphous. No, no, no one, no one's denying that the virus exists, but. But face masks are nappies, that kind of thing. It's a... uh, but but it could be that, or yeah. they could be denying the virus exists. But what I'm saying is that there's this 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 group, and obviously, as we've had sadly so many more deaths, and they, they fall they fall apart a bit further. But at what point would they have any accountability for some of their actions? And that story which you just had, it's a direct link. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is and. Facebook is so powerful. Social media is so powerful. We get, ex we have been exposed to these. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm just going to cross to the newsroom, Ben, and then I'm going to come back to you immediately afterwards. So, so I know you're very busy. I'm, I, I can't, I can't really ask the newsreader to hurry up. That would be inappropriate. But I promise that, that we'll be back with you imminently. Dr. Ben White is in Basingstoke, Hampshire. Been working on the wards. We became pals during the junior doctors' um, uh, controversy, I suppose. Strike, call it what you will. And uh, well, he's been proved right about that. So interesting to hear where he is today. Do you encounter so-called lockdown sceptics or COVID sceptics or whatever they're calling themselves this week? Do you encounter them on the wards, Ben? Because there is that appalling story this week and, and two men have been arrested, so I'll limit what I say, um, in, in which people filmed themselves trying to, to trying to take a man out of the critical care ward and, and to remove oxygen from the patient while doctors begged them to, to leave him alone. Did, did you come across scepticism on the actual wards? Yeah, I watched that, actually. That was shocking. Was uh, but I thought that the staff were very, very good in exactly. that situation. I thought the staff coped with it. I haven't really. Good. There's always the odd whisperings of stuff, but um, we, don't, we don't really see too much of it on the ward and in the hospital, which is why the amount of it on social media is 
it's just it's such a difference to the reality. Yes, I, I don't you get know. that the golf. I mean, I, a lot of people are referring me to more examples of Marjorie Taylor Greene in America who's just ended up in Congress and who did indeed claim that the bushfires in California were caused by uh, a Jewish laser that was fired from yeah. space and, and we can still giggle at that even though even what happened and that's the gulf isn't it you're a doctor mm. it doesn't really make any sense to you no, in terms of quantity no. or quality what is being punted as plausible online no and I think your, your your previous caller before saying about you know exposing people to actually seeing firsthand what it looks like yes. to be put on a ventilator or a breathing machine and turned on your back and on your front repeatedly just to try to keep you alive, I, but it shouldn't you know it, it shouldn't have to take that to to give somebody to to for somebody to believe that is what is really happening, and the problem. I think is they there is no they feel no like there's no repercussions for yeah. what they did or what they have done or for some of them what they are still doing some of them have clearly faded away and they've deleted all their tweets and they're yeah. very quiet now yeah. and people are disowning them right left uh, left right and center but but there are others that and is there no mechanism for holding these people no. accountable because they they have they have, and you know, I was saying, I think it's a kind of violence. It's not the kind of violence where somebody is doing something direct to lead, to, you know, but it, it is indirectly led to people coming into hospital and dying because they have believed what has been put about, you know, screenshots of statistical tables, which are nonsense, um, predictions that there's no second wave, yeah. these sorts of things. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not talking about mob rule. I know. I'm not talking about people, you know, that, that, but I'm talking about a kind of a justice and a kind of an accountability. And I'm, okay, as a scientist, as, I'm not, I mean, as a researcher or as a doctor, I am, I am, was very scared of saying something which might lead to harm directly yes. throughout the whole pandemic, right? Yes. And whenever you speak to your friends and family and anything like that, why do these people not have any of that sort of, why do they not have that? Why were they so confident? I don't Why know. Why did they seem to know more than all of Sage, Independent Sage, and everyone else? Why? I don't know. And, and where's the accountability for these people? Because they well, have I know the answer to that bit. They're, caused they're, they're, death. They're, they're, well, you, you, you as a doctor say that the people posting nonsense about there being no second wave or nonsense about bum masks not being necessary or nonsense about figures being manipulated and, and, and hospitals not being overrun, you, you state categorically they have caused deaths, but you couldn't prove yeah. it in a court of law. And there's your problem. No, there's there's two, the absence of accountability. Ago, two, two days ago, I was on the ward and I had to call the wife and the son of a patient who I thought potentially was going to die in the next 12 hours. And I had to tell them that the way that things are at the moment, so full, we cannot allow you to immediately, that second, come in to see that person. Okay? This is happening all the time. Yeah. People are dying on the wards because of coronavirus and the, the story, the reason I called the story touched me because they never got to see that person before they died. You mean Jackie's, Jackie's story earlier? Yeah, Jackie's exactly. Story. Yes, I know. It's, tra it's tragic. That will live with these people for li all of these lives, 100,000 lives. How many of those people, with these people taken away from them, they will never get to have those discussions. They will never see those people before they die. And, and honestly, it's all coming out now I'm calling you, but this is... I've not called in or done anything during during these during the coronavirus. We just get on with our jobs, but well, it's unbelievable. That and and, these and I have to are point. Held to account. There's another problem here, and I don't know if you'll thank me for pointing it out, but the fact that you were publicly associated with the industrial action against Jeremy Hunt when he was uh, a health secretary means that if yeah. if, if the far right uh, gossip sites or, or or indeed a couple of conservative backbenchers hear you saying this their knee-jerk yeah. immediate responses oh you Absolutely. can't you can't trust him because he was a critic of the conservative government three yeah, years ago I know. and i actually took him to court twice actually I know. so not just once but but yeah no and and i mean it's just, it's just i mean me, do they when they come to hospital these people do they insist on being treated by doctors who are supportive and impressed by boris johnson's performance as prime minister or are they happy to be treated by doctors like you and rachel who are profoundly unimpressed well, I mean, I said it before, 
and I'll say it again, uh, my politics or my political views or what I think of the government has absolutely no bearing on what I do as a doctor and the care that I would give people and, not, and, and that should never do it. And they should never, the two, the two paths should never cross. And that's the way... Well, I know that, that, and I you have. know that. And I wonder whether they pretend not to know that or whether they just think you're like them. And if they were doctors, they would treat people according to their political yeah, affiliations, according I, I, to their need. I don't think, I don't think people know. What, it, what it's like to be fair and I, I understand why there would be concern about things like that but but you have you, you have to understand the the a hundred thousand deaths and and actually I, I haven't directly criticized the government I haven't said it was no, I know. the scientific advice I mean I, I don't think I'm, I'm definitely not a fan of Boris Johnson I'll tell you that but he it, there are you know there are certain things which which the government's hands and the, the side, and the public health England's hands are tied on this. But what I'm saying is, these lockdown sceptics, these, whatever you want to call them, mm. they have, they have to be held accountable for what they have they can't been be. doing. They can't be. Because you couldn't prove in a court of law that they were responsible for the death of Gary Matthews or Jackie's friend's mum or, or, or many of the people contacting me and many of the people that you may have treated. You can't prove it. Mm. Well. And I'm sorry, Ben. And, I, and, I, and I'm grateful for, for everything that you do. And I worry the same sort of people who have suddenly discovered concern for uh, uh, children who, who may be suffering as a result of, of being confined to barracks, of having to be homeschooled. They, they obviously spent 10 years not giving a fig about huge cuts to mental health provisions, but apparently now they really, really care. They never say anything about the mental health of doctors. And, and listening to you, it occurs to me that you and your colleagues and, and a friend that I spoke to this week who is tasked with contributing to the decision-making process with regards to distribution of ventilators, this stuff must be weighing on your shoulders more heavily than the rest of us can even yeah, begin and it, to imagine. And it, I, I, it's not... So this is, this is the other thing about the way that this lockdown argument is painted is that doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals looking after people, we're in some way pro-lockdown yes. in itself. Nobody is... Nobody wants to be in lockdown. We're very fortunate. We have a job to go to, and I completely accept that. We get to go to work and do a job, and, you know, that is something which other people don't have. But, what, but we also have a time when we need our downtime, mm. and we need our time off. And, and our time off is also in lockdown. Yes. So it is, it is <laughs> and it's rubbish. Worst option. <laughs> it's, it's rubbish. Worst Everyone knows it's rubbish, but options. everything else is worse. Ben, look after yourself, mate. I, I, I mean that. It's a bit of a glib throwaway line, but I do, I do worry that, that um, people are operating on fumes, I think, is the motoring analogy. And, and thank God you are, because you're our last line of defence, not just against the virus, but also against these ghouls and vampires who keep insisting that we should do less to keep the virus yeah. out of yeah. public circulation. Well, stay safe and yourself. You. And, uh, well, more in, you do much, much more important work than I do. I think that is one of the least controversial things I've ever said on the radio. And you take care as well. And I look forward to raising a glass with you when this madness is over. I, 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 it, all right, I'm not a lawyer. I hope that doesn't come as a surprise to anybody. And the, it's so regrettable, the... Um, the fight between the European Commission and AstraZeneca, which we are inevitably, as, as the United Kingdom is inevitably caught up in, because the claim seems to be that they're contractually obliged to deliver 100 million doses to the United Kingdom above and beyond and before they are contractually required to, to um, keep their promises to the European Commission. I, forgive me if I've got this wrong. I've got, there's no axe to grind here. I'm just interested in the facts. And so then that floats the weird business of, of the European Commission threatening to ban exports to third countries as a retaliation against the United Kingdom, refusing, I think you could say, to, to export to, to the European Commission. So it's, it looks a bit like he said, she said, although obviously the European Commission are in dire straits with regard to, to rollout, weeks more of, of delays expected, whereas we continue, we, I, I, Kate Bingham and her former colleagues because she's not in that post anymore her job was to set up what is now coming to fruition they clearly played an absolute blinder according to the available facts if the facts change then we can change our minds but i hope we don't i really flipping hope we don't have to so they've published the contract um best reasonable efforts is the key phrase in it but of course i don't think you'll be able to conclusively decide whether this contract favors astrazeneca's position or the european commission's position 
I don't. I did very cautious. All right. Until you've seen the contract that AstraZeneca have with the United Kingdom. Uh, and so there's lots of redactions in it. But if you're expecting a, a, a VAR type result here, a VAR conclusion, say, right, that's 1 0 to AstraZeneca, or that's 1 0, it's definitely it's over the line. The European Commission are in the clear, and AstraZeneca are in breach of contract. I, 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 well, there's a reason why you pay the lawyers the silly money, even more than Keith gets paid. There is a reason why. Um, and I, I think, looking at early responses and indeed the absence of a, of a, a VAR style, uh, VF, VAR for people not interested in football is, is like a camera-based system which goes back over a referee's decision and determines whether or not it's true, correct or not. And it's hugely controversial for a whole variety of reasons that we will not go into today. But I'm just looking at some of the early responses and I think think it might be the case that you're not going to get a definitive answer to it until we've seen the United Kingdom's contract. So Tony Connolly, who is one of the best chron chroniclers of, uh, 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 of such matters, has, has had a crack at it, and I'll share that with you shortly. What? Is Tony Connolly talking to us now? Right, no, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to Ben shortly. Uh, eight minutes to 12 is the time, and Claire is in Beckton to steer us back to the freedom of speech conversation. Claire, thank you. Hi, James. Hello, Claire. Um, I, I'd just like to make a point that it, all of these COVID deniers spreading their misinformation, which in turn spreads the coronavirus, which in turn overwhelms the NHS, and it's, it's not just COVID patients that then suffer. Because my mum died last week and, and there was no ambulance for her because the system was so overwhelmed. <sighs> and I don't know that the system would have been any more or less overwhelmed if it wasn't for these, these ghouls and vampires spreading misinformation. We, we'll never really be able to count. We know that Gary Matthews is probably dead because he believed this nonsense and we know that he probably infected lots of other people while behaving in a way that endorsed the nonsense. But... I, 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 yeah. I don't want to intrude upon your grief. Do, 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 do you think? Do you think Mum oh. could still have been alive if things had if, if if things had been handled differently? If things had gone differently on the on the specific issues that we're talking about today, not on the overall response of the government, because yeah. that's I think a rhetorical question. Well, I think we we didn't know, but she had pancreatic cancer, right. and one one of the. Uh, effects of that is that it causes clots oh. and it caused clot, a clot in her brain and she suffered a stroke. <sighs> so for, um, for the last week of her life, she was horrendously brain damaged. So we couldn't say goodbye to her properly because she the couldn't speak. She was in all and, sorts of bother yeah. and the hospitals are, 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 are sealed off effectively, aren't they? Yeah, and it, well, we, we didn't, we were actually allowed to see her in the end, but she couldn't speak. She, she was horrifically brain damaged. So you, and, you, you, you're and here. And I think to, that we were we were deprived of yes. a chance to say goodbye to her properly because the, the hospitals were so overwhelmed, and because there's so many coronavirus patients. And I think that uh, because these ghouls and vampires are encouraging people to take more risks. Well, why do you think they do it? it? Do you have? I, I've, I, you may not have given it any thought whatsoever, but I don't quite. I mean, look, you can get attention in all manner of ways. You know, I could streak around the studio with the cameras on, and, and, and <laughs> there's all sorts of things you can do to garner attention. But what's the win here? If you say it's outrageous that I'm not allowed to preach against face masks, what's the win? What 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 does success look like? I think maybe because it's just such um, a, a, it's a like it's grabbing the zeitgeist, isn't it? The, this is the thing that everyone's talking about right now, so that's what's going to garner them the most attention right now. And uh, that's that's all I can think, really. Yeah, so it but is. Just, and, and once you've I done this thing to, to grab attention, of, of their go consequences. On. Well, they won't. I just want to think of their consequences. There's 103,000 people are dead already, and and that's the ones who've died mm -hmm. from COVID, not people like your mum who, who who perhaps have died as a result of the hospitals being overrun by the results of some of the COVID conspiracies yeah. and some of the poor response to it. If they, if they were going to pause, and, and actually Ben reminded us, some people have started deleting all of their previous comments, but plenty of them haven't. 
And they can't so I, climb I can, down. I can see, yeah, I can see the difference in, in how the hospitals are run because my father also passed from cancer last year, and oh, we were allowed. Oh, you've had a time of it, haven't you? We were allowed to be there at the end, and he he did have the ambulance when when he was rushed to hospital, and it was totally different for yes. mum. Well, that, I mean, it, oh, you know it is because so the, they're, they're opening new wards, they're, they're, they're re re reallocating staff. Uh, I, I I hope. Well, have you you got someone looking after you, Claire? I do. Yeah, well, I that, do. That's something, isn't it? Because of course, the other consequence of lockdown is that some people will be grieving in isolation in circumstances that you wouldn't wish on anybody uh 11 claire take care i i, I, I do well things will get better but no one can pretend that they're going to get better anytime soon with those two losses weighing upon your on your con on your mind on your heart actually, actually.